Abiram was watching. He was happy. Yes, he has a service attitude. He likes to serve the Vaishnavas. He's more happy about making Vaishnavas happy than even his own survival. He is qualified for mercy. And Abhiram Thakur was so ecstatic, he had a whip named Jai Mangala. Now, most people would not like to be hit by a whip. But this whip, anyone he touched with it, would attain love of God. So he took that whip and he said, Srinivas! And Srinivas, tears started pouring from his eyes. Whipped him again, hair started standing on end. He was crying out the names of Krishna. He was dancing. Whipped him a third time. He was just going out of control in ecstatic love. Finally, Abhiram's wife says, Stop! Stop! He's just a boy. How much ecstasy can he contain? He studied under Abhiram Thakur for some time. And then Abhiram Thakur said the same thing that Gadadhar Pandit, Janava Devi, and Narahari Sarakar told him. Go to Vrindavan and study under Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. So he traveled to Vrindavan by foot. No what, spice airways or anything like that. <laughs> Not even Indian railways. He walked by foot. And he came to Vishram Ghat. How eager he was. He is in Mathura, bathing in the Yamuna. The same place Krishna would bathe. The same place Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first bathed when he entered into Braj Mandala. How excited he was. And tomorrow morning he was thinking, I'll walk to Vrindavan and I will meet Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. Oh, he was so happy. He was so, he was so eager. While he's taking his bath, he's hearing some Brahmins talking. Oh, how lamentable. Some time back, Sanatana Goswami left this world. And Raghunath Bhatta Goswami left the world. And Kashishwar Pandit left this world. And now, just now, Rupa Goswami has left this world to return to the Lord in this spiritual abode. When Srinivasacharya heard that, he was wailing in tears. But because of that eagerness, Rupa and Sanatana Goswami appeared to him, said, go to Vrindavan. Study Srimad Bhagavatam under Jiva Goswami and take initiation under Gopal Bhatta Goswami. And we will give our full blessings to you through them. So he went. He came to the Govindaji temple, saw the beautiful form of Radha Govinda, worshipped him and just couldn't contain his happiness. At night, he actually was laying unconscious at the door of Govindaji. The news came to Jiva Goswami that he had come. They had to get lights and find him laying at the doorway. Jiva Goswami picked him up, brought him to Radhadamodar temple, and introduced him to Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Srinivasacharya said, I am the most fallen, insignificant. My only hope, my only shelter is please accept me as your eternal servant. Gopal Bhatta Goswami initiated him and then told him to study under Jiva Goswami, the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the literature is of the Goswamis which are all expansions of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Soon Narottam Das Thakur came. 
He took initiation from Lokanath Goswami and was a classmate of Srinivasacharya and Shamananda Prabhu, who was then Duki Krishna. He came from Orissa. And the three of them studied under Jiva Goswami. Later on, all the Vaishnavas, Raghunathas Goswami, Lokanath Goswami, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, Pugarbha Goswami, Jiva Goswami, they all blessed them. Janava Devi, who is our, our guru, she wants the literatures of the Goswamis to be distributed in Bengal. Take them. Go and preach there. Lokanath Goswami instructed Narottam Das Thakur, you should install the deity of Krishna, you should preach Harikatha, Nam Sankirtan, and most of all, teach people the glories of serving the Vaishnavas. We know the story. In Bhiram, in uh, Vana Vishnupuram, the books were all stolen by a dacoit king named Birambir. Srinivasacharya told the others who were all devastated, the books of the Goswamis gone forever and it's our fault. We were sleeping and they got stolen. Srinivasacharya said, Narottam Das Thakur, You've already been given in the instruction by your gurus to go back to your home in K3 to preach. Shamananda Goswami, you've already been given your instruction. Go back to Utkala to preach. So they left. And eventually, the king not only gave the books back to Srinivasacharya, but became his disciple and made the entire kingdom the disciples of Srinivasacharya. Day and night in Van, in Van Vishnupuram, there was nothing but Hari Kata and Hari Kirtan. Srinivasacharya went back to Jajigram area in Bengal. One day there was a wedding procession, according to the Prem Vilas of Nityananda Das. There was a wedding procession. And Srinivasacharya said, loud enough so that the groom could hear him. He said, oh, you are enjoying so much with expectations of happiness? In this temporary material world where everything is a source of misery, you are, you are thinking that getting more further entangled and bound in sense gratification is making happiness. What you do is you have tied a rope into a noose of death around your neck and you're thinking that by pulling it, you're going to be happy. Hare Krishna. Ramchandra Kaviraj heard this. The person who was the person who was being a few days later he came to Srinivasacharya's ashram <laughs> and one of Srinivasacharya's main disciples, his name was Vyasacharya. He saw this person named Ramchandra and he said, I want you, and he said, I want you to have a discussion, a debate with Vyasacharya. So they were debating and Ramchandra was such an amazing scholar. He was defeating all the logic of Vyasacharya. Srinivasacharya was really amazed to see this. So then Srinivasacharya started debating with Ramchandra Kahn. And Srinivas was really just in bliss to see the 
powerful scholarship of this Brahman. And after debating for hours and hours and hours, Srinivasacharya said, you are a very learned scholar. I'm very pleased to see your scholarship, but it is all nonsense. <laughs> all your scholarship, all, all this grammar, all this Sanskrit, so what? Unless you understand the Srimad Bhagavatam, you miss the essence of everything. You've wasted your life. Ramchandra fell at the feet of Srinivasacharya crying and said, that is why I have come here to surrender to you to study Srimad Bhagavatam. I am your eternal servant. Now Srinivasacharya, we understand his eagerness to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from what we have just recently spoke and the different gurus he learned from directly and indirectly. Srinivasacharya instructed Ramchandra in Srimad Bhagavatam philosophy. Harikata, the nectar of sharing Krishna consciousness. Later on, when there was that glorious festival in Ketri, for the first Gaur Purnima festival, Narottam Das Thakur came to Jajigram and told Srinivasacharya, this is what I want to do. Invite all the Vaishnavas from all directions to have the first major festival to celebrate the appearance day of Lord Chaitanya. And my cousin brother, Santosh, he's going to spend the treasury of the kingdom to facilitate this festival. And the Lord has appeared to me and told me to install six deities. They're being made. So the festival was arranged. These six deities. They were carved out of first class marble and stone, granite. There were five sets of Radha Krishna deities. And Lord Chaitanya wanted one deity of himself, Goranga. He had the best craftsmen carving these deities out of the stone of Lord Chaitanya. But every time Narottam Das Thakur saw it, he said, it's not good enough. It has to be more beautiful. It has to be more accurate. This is not satisfactory. You see, sometimes we go to Jaipur to get a deity made and then it's just totally in the hands of the craftsmen there. But Narottam Das Thakur, he wanted these deities perfect according to how Krishna was revealing himself to Narottam. So several attempts and Narottam Das Thakur could not accept the deity of Lord Chaitanya that was being made. And he was becoming really in anxiety, because Gaur Purnima was coming very soon, and he had to install a deity. So he cried out to Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, unless you bestow your mercy, unless you appear in the form of the carvings that they're making, then there's no hope. My Lord, please appear. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in a vision to Narottam Das Thakur. Are you all still awake? Are you eager to hear? Hmm, you're making me eager to speak also, thank you. Otherwise I'm quite dead. So, Lord Chaitanya appeared to Narottam Das and he said, your craftsmen have made all these deities of me and none of them came out right. Haribo, His Holiness Naranjan Swami Maharaj Ki I don't want to be like Roma Harshan Sutta, so <laughs> please forgive me for a moment.
Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told to Narottam Das Thakur in this vision the reason every time that deity wala keeps making deities wrong is because I will not allow him to make a deity of me proper. And I will tell you the reason why. The deity has already been made. Before I took sannyas in Sri Navadvipdham, I had someone make a deity of me personally. I took that deity and put it in the Ganges. No one else has ever seen it. But because Narottam Das, you are so dear to me. Because your love for me and my love for you, I am going to reveal that deity to you. Go to the outskirts of Keturi. There is a merchant named, what was his name? There is a merchant who has a granary. Within that silo of grains, I am waiting for you. Narottam Das Thakur went to the outskirts of town. Vipradas. He was asking everyone, where is the house of Vipradas? He said, he's there. He went to Vipradas and said, you have a granary? He said, no. But I heard you had a granary. He said, no. Don't ask about that granary. That means you have a granary. He said, don't ask about that granary. Years ago, I had a full stock of grains there. But it was infested with poisonous snakes. I invested so much money. It's a major loss. I called mystics. I called snake charmers. They chanted mantras to somehow or other get the snakes out of my granary. But the more mantras they chanted, the louder and more angry the serpents hissed. So I just boarded it up and closed it forever. It's been years. Narottam Das Thakur said, I'm going inside. There's someone waiting for me in there. <laughs> Vipra said, no, no, don't go. He said, I'm going. And all the townspeople in that area, were they knew about this story. They were screaming at Narottam Das Thakur, don't go, you will die, there's venomous snakes. But he was smiling. He had complete faith in the words of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He walked right to the silo, opened the door, and as soon as he opened the door, all the serpents came flooding out entered into the forest. Narottam Das Thakur went into the granary and the deity of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came right onto his lap. He carried it out. Everyone was watching. A beautiful, solid, bold deity of Mahaprabhu about this big. He didn't really get a chance to look at it so well. He was just performing his seva. He performed Harinam, carrying the deity back to Keturi Gram, where all of the devotees were following behind him. It was a wonderful festival. He came into his bhajan kutir and placed the deity down. And as he looked at the face of the deity, tears of love poured from his eyes. He offered his obeisances. And just then and there, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu empowered him to invent 
not exactly invent, but to reveal a special form of kirtan that is sung in the spiritual world of Goloka Vrindavan. Narottam Das Thakur danced. And when he danced, everyone around could see he danced just like Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srinivasa Acharya, Janava Devi, and all the living associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu all came to Ketri Gram to perform this Gaur Purnima festival where the deities were installed. After the festival, during the festival, Ramchandra and who actually had already gone to Brindaban with Srinivasacharya. He was given by Jiva Goswami the title Ramchandra Kaviraj. He and Narottam Das Thakur became intimate, loving friends. Such loving friends. Srinivasacharya saw that and told his disciple, you go and remain always with Narottam Das Thakur. And our Vaishnav literatures tell the relationship between Ramchandra Kaviraj and Narottam Das Thakur. They were inseparable. They would take prasad together. They would bathe together. They would sleep in the same room together. They would cook together. They would wake up for the Mangal Arti and celebrate every morning together. They would dress the deities together. They would serve the Vaishnavas together. They would perform Nam Sankirtan together. But in all circumstances, whatever they were doing practically, they were always discussing Krishna together. Krishna Kata. Much chitta mat kata prana bodhiyanta parasparam katiyantas chamam nityam toshyanti charamam ticha. Always absorbed in hearing and speaking about Krishna together with eagerness. And therefore their love became so deep. When Janava Devi, the consort of Nityananda Prabhu, when she saw the relationship of Ramchandra Kaviraj and Narottam Das Thakur, she was struck with wonder. After the Ketari festival, she went to Brindaban. Lokanath Goswami was very eager to find out about how his disciple Narottam Das Thakur is doing. She told him, that there is no Vaishnav like your disciple Narottam Thakur. No disciple like this. How he worships the deity with such love. And how, how he serves the Vaishnavas. The love, the care. He's the very personification of Vaishnav etiquette. His life and his soul is to satisfy the Vaishnavas in every possible way with love from his heart. And the friendship he has with Ramchandra Kaviraj, Janava says, they are like one soul in two bodies the deep commitment of friendship that they have to each other in sharing Krishna through Krishna Seva, through Krishna Kata. I can understand that these two personalities are fully blessed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because of the love that they have for each other and the camaraderie they have in speaking about Krishna chanting the names of Krishna, and most of all, serving the Vaishnavas together. 
Gopal Bhatta Goswami asked Janava about his disciple Srinivasacharya. And he praised so much Srinivasacharya's love, his devotion. He said, not only do you have the greatest disciple, but you have the greatest disciple of a disciple, Ramchandra Kaviraj. In fact, your disciple and his disciple are equal in every way. Ramchandra Kaviraj may have been equal in every way to Srinivas Acharya, but still he surrendered and served him as a most humble menial servant. That is the spirit of a Vaishnava. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he served Ishwara Puri, his Guru Maharaj, with humble menial service from his heart. He asked Ishwara Puri to instruct him submissively. But first, he served his guru with his own hands. He cooked for him, washed and cleaned up for him. And Ishwara Puri told him that you are a fool. Don't even consider trying to understand Vedanta. Just chant the holy names. I will give you a sloka which is a crestual sloka. Never forget it. Keep it in your heart always. Harinama, 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 Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. In this age of Kali, there is no other way except the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Lord Chaitanya started chanting, and he came back to his guru, and he said, I don't know what this mantra has done to me. I'm crying and I'm shivering and I'm... <laughs> he said, that is very good, my son. You have attained love of God, the ecstasy which is the perfection of life. Now go and spread this Nam Sankirtan movement in all directions throughout the world. That is my order. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not begin his Nam Sankirtan movement, which is why he descended from the spiritual world until he received that order. Vaishnava etiquette. Lord Chaitanya came to teach by his example how to be a devotee. Meanwhile, Shamananda, he went to Orissa. And he was preaching, and so many people were coming and accepting pure devotional service as the goal of life. One time, with his disciples, he was performing Nam Sankirtan through the streets of some town in Orissa. There was a Mughal king whose general representative hated Hindus, hated them, outlawed any type of practice. And here's Shamananda and his devotees playing murdangas and karatals and loudly crying out, filling the entire atmosphere with the Maha Mantra. <laughs> This general's name was Sher Khan. Do you all know the story? He was furious, beside himself with anger. He went and started beating the devotees, breaking every murdanga, seizing the karatals, throwing them away. While he was doing that, Shamananda, Goswami mystically started screaming out Krishna's holy name so loud it was 
superhuman. It was an emergency. <laughs> he was screaming out Krishna's holy names. And as he screamed out, the power of his voice and the power of the name of God caused Sher Khan and all of his associates, the army, their beards and their mustaches blazed in fire. And suddenly they started vomiting blood from their mouth and their nose. They left the scene. The next day, Shamananda Goswami had a bigger Sankirtan party with new Murdungas and Karatals. And they were dancing through the streets, more loudly chanting the holy names. Again, Sher Khan comes on the scene. Everybody's wondering, now what? Sher Khan falls at the lotus feet of Shamananda Goswami. On his knees with folded hands, he says, I surrender to you. Let me tell you what happened. Yesterday, when we tried to disturb you, my beard set on fire. The first time in my life, blood was coming out of my mouth and my nose. I was wondering, what's happening? In confusion, I went to sleep that night. And the almighty, reverential form of Allah appeared before me and told me, you have committed a great offense to me. They were chanting my holy names. And then I saw the all-powerful form of Allah transform into the beautiful golden form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He smiled upon me. He was dancing. I fell at his feet and surrendered. And he told me that if you want to attain love of God, you must become a disciple of Shamananda Goswami and he will deliver you. So I have come to become your disciple. Please accept this most fallen, wretched, offensive creature as your eternal servant. And he initiated him. The power of Hari Kata and the power of Hari Kirtan. Can I tell you another story about Hari Kirtan? This story is connected to Pune. Pune, I'm sorry. <laughs> According to our Vaishnav literatures, a very special person of Pune had a very, very significant role in our Vaishnav history. In Bengal, there was a very learned and honored Brahmin of the name Lakshminath Lahiri. He was highly regarded as a great scholar. He had a son whose name was Rupa Chandra. And he expected his son to carry on his legacy of scholarship. But there was a problem. Rupa Chandra refused to go to school. His father wanted to send him to school. The child was just so mischievous, he just wouldn't go to school. Father tried to do everything to get him to go to school, but he was so stubborn, he just would not go to school and he would not study. Any of your parents have that problem? <laughs> the 
Listen to the story. If you do have a child that has this problem, this may give you some hope. <laughs> Rupa Chandra annoyed his father so much because he would not go to school. He would not pick up a book. He would not do any studies. He just wanted to play. So, just to punish his child, he put some ashes in the child's food one day. Prasad. And when the child took a bite and he tasted there were ashes in his food, he was so belligerent, he just left home. And after he left home, he wanted to prove to his father he could be a scholar without him. So he went to a place called Pandit Nadi and started studying Sanskrit, studying scriptures, and he was so determined, he became the greatest student. Then he went to Navadweep, and in Navadweep, he became one of the brightest students. Started learning all the different systems of philosophy. From Navadweep, after gaining more credentials, he went to Jagannath Puri. And there he studied under pundits there. And while he was in Puri, from a distance, he saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing. But he kept his distance. From Jagannath Puri, after studying whatever he could learn there, he came to a place which was considered all over India to be a very high seat of learning. This is even 500 years ago. He came to Pune in Maharashtra, according to the Prem Vilas of Nityananda Das. And here, he scrutinizingly studied the Vedas under great pundits in different ashrams and, and institutions of scholarship. Here in Pune, he became such a scholar of the Vedas that Goddess Saraswati personally empowered him. And Goddess Saraswati herself, so impressed by his scholarship, she gave him the title Acharya. And when he spoke, she was right there to empower him. From Pune, he decided to travel all over India and challenge scholars in debate. Everywhere Rupa Chandra went, he would go to the highest pundits and challenge them and defeated them. And he had something called the Jaya Patra, where everybody he defeated had to sign, I was defeated by Rupa Chandra. In his travels, he ultimately came to Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, he heard about the two greatest scholars, Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. I've already defeated the scholars everywhere else in India. This is the last two. He came before Rupa Goswami and his brother Sanatan. I challenge you to a scholarly, philosophical debate. Any subject. Rupa Goswami looked at him and he bowed down. <laughs> Rupa Goswami bowed down to him. <laughs> and then he offered him a very, very nice seat. Then Rupa Goswami offered him Prasad and offered him water and offered him all greetings. And after giving him every kind of loving, affectionate etiquette, he said, I don't waste my time with scholarly debates. It's just a waste of time. What is the use? He said, No, I challenge you. You must meet my challenge. He said, 
I accept defeat. You're better than me. Then sign this document. Both Rupa and Sanatana and Goswami signed. We have been defeated by Rupa Narayan. Amanina manadena. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught, what is a Vaishnav? One who offers all respect to others and one who does not demand or expect respect for oneself. That is a Vaishnav. Rupa and Sanatana did not care because they knew what this Rupa Chandra would do. He was going to go all over the world and show everybody, I defeated Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. Who cares? Can you imagine if there was internet in those days? <laughs> Within a day, everyone would think Rupa and Sanatana had been defeated. What? They didn't care about what people thought. They were only concerned with pure devotional service. So, he was very happy. He was walking toward the bank of the Jamuna and he met Jiva Goswami. And he told Jiva Goswami, uh, I have just defeated Rupa and Sanatana. And I heard you're also a good scholar. Let me debate with you. Jiva Goswami saw, you never defeated Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. They just didn't want to waste their precious time debating with some mundane scholar like you. And you're going to pro propagate all over the world that you are superior to them? I am their disciple. Through me, I will debate you. They will debate with you. If you defeat me, then you can tell the world you have defeated Rupa and Sanatana. But if I defeat you, then you must tell the world you have been defeated by Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. Yes, let us debate. According to Nityananda Das, the debate was based on personalism versus impersonalism. Rupa Chandra was preaching this impersonalistic philosophy and Jiva Goswami that the Lord is supremely, eternally, the most beautiful, all-attractive person. And only through devotion can we approach him and realize our love for him. They sat at the bank of the Yamuna for six full days. Neither of them could overcome the other. On the seventh day, Jiva Goswami defeated Rupa Chandra. In the association of Jiva Goswami and after having the blessings of Rupa and Sanatana Goswamis, Rupa Chandra's heart completely changed. He fell at the feet of Jiva Goswami and cried. He said, I am so proud, so materialistic. I even offended your guru, Rupa Goswami. Now I accept myself as your eternal servant. Please forgive me. Jiva Goswami lifted him up and brought him to Rupa Goswami's lotus feet. There he fell at the feet of Rupa Goswami and begged him for forgiveness. I am so low, so materialistic. I've wasted my whole life with mundane academics, but not even understanding the whole purpose behind it. <laughs> 